Now, in just a moment, uh, the importance of mentorship in the advertising business, but uh, very quickly, the Cape Town Partnership has just launched a new free newspaper. It's called Molo, which is aimed at bringing all Cape Tonians together. A diverse society, so this is no easy media challenge. Molo is the newest placemaking uh, magazine, if you like, or newspaper, which is a community newspaper which is produced free by the Cape Town Partnership for Cape Tonians. We co-create it with Cape Tonians. It becomes a social bridge for Cape Tonians to find out more about each other, to learn more about themselves. It allows us to connect as Cape Tonians. The first edition's theme was food. What is their favorite dishes, their multi-generational dishes, for example, learned from grandmother to grandson. You also are able to talk about food in general, the economy, you know, how is food produced, which is in fact a very fantastic way of teaching you about the food that you eat. Now the key, the holy grail, I'd suggest, in the brand communications industry is talent. And for that talent to grow, skill needs to be grown and mentored. So let's introduce you now to a South African expat and now a fully integrated New Yorker. Kevin Swanepoel is a man committed to development and transformation in the advertising industry. There were just too many award shows, as there still are today. Um, so all these award shows got together and they formed the one club for Art and Copy and uh, the one show and the pencil is our award and it's a double-sided pencil that's sharpened on both ends is signifying how an art director and copywriter work together so that was initially started in uh, about 73 a, a group of those individuals really firmly believed in the principles of the one club which is a non-profit organization uh, where they take the revenue derived from the award show entries and they give back to the industry so you know the the real key focus that we have as uh, an organization is to try and uplift the next generation of uh, young professionals, creative professionals. Something dear to our heart as well is uh, making sure that there's more diversity in our industry. We have some very big diversity programs uh, running and uh, we also have a very big program running in China which uh, does the same thing, helps to reward the next generation of young professionals. So one of our biggest programs that we're running right now is uh, the creative boot camps. Boot camps now run in seven cities across the US and uh, our, our goal is to, for one week, bring in students who don't really look at advertising as a career path. They might be studying writing, creative writing, or they might be somebody who's good at drawing but not necessarily thinking about advertising. Our goal is to bring them in, give them a creative brief, and work with mentors. So we, we look to agency creatives to come in and mentor these kids through a week-long process and uh, they get given a real world brief and at the end of it they get a very good introduction to what it would be like to be a creative in an agency. Other areas of really great interest are obviously gaming, architecture, um, fashion design. We're now seeing these new ideas that are either generated in social media or different forms of media. They don't call for a, a traditional type of creative. They, call it for a musician even, to come out from a different part of the world, a different experience in life, and to give some added flavor to the creative department. The beauty of the program is, is how effective it's been really, because we've seen young kids who haven't gone through a portfolio school, and they haven't had the real training that some others have had, but agencies have actually looked at them and seen the creative genius in some of these young minds, and hired them as interns to get them that foot in the door to get their portfolio started. We have a program called Where All the Black People. Um, everybody freaked out when we named it that, but uh, it was named that with uh, Jimmy Smith, who's on our board, um, and uh, Jeff Goodby from Goodby Silverstein Partners. Uh, they decided to have a, a topic of discussion about the lack of diversity in advertising, and uh, the, the headline was Where All the Black People. So we, we had this discussion, uh, during Creative Week in New York. That topic of conversation got so heated um, and there were so many angry people you know, in that room that we decided that rather than just talk about it, let's actually do something about it. So we've turned that into a, a full day program where we fly in diverse talent from all over the country. Uh, the agency sponsored this and uh, we are very fortunate to have really good support from all the big agencies and uh, they'll sponsor a number of seats and with that money what we do is we fly 
young creatives in, whether it's from uh, Miami or San Francisco or wherever they might be. We, we fly them in, we put them up in a hotel, we get them and their portfolios in front of the brightest creative minds in the US. So we have all the, the big agencies uh, who are looking to hire, and we, we really mean this. Um, this is an opportunity for you to hire some of the best creative minds. And uh, last year, we had about 16 people from the, the the Where All the Black People event actually getting jobs. So I think that's terrific. Now we've gone behind the scenes of a new insurance commercial on the program. Now something that's probably a little easier to sell, fish and chips. The idea is based on food and family. The agency is House of Brave and this is how it was made. <laughs> Ocean Basket celebrated their 18th birthday this year and it's 1995 that Fats and his brother George Lazaridis started the first Ocean Basket store in Menland in Pretoria. Now we have 166 restaurants and we're opening our 20th international store in a month's time in Dubai. So the brand has come a long way. I think what we managed to do is really create a sense of family and the unity and the Mediterranean feel and the look and the Kitchen of Maria and all that kind of stuff in the previous commercials. Um, and I think it really worked for, for that. But what we wanted to do with this one is just up the ante a little bit and actually create more humor in that. And um, for this, what we're basically saying is that the sushi is so good that the Japanese wants it back. Uh, so we've got this ninja who pops in everywhere on the set just trying to get the sushi back. It's always about remaining true to the family culture. And I think that what we really wanted to do is, I mean, we would refer to it as the, the Mediterranean kitchen experience. You know, if you go to an ocean basket, you don't, you don't feel like you're in a restaurant. You feel like you're in someone's kitchen. And that's certainly what we try to capture from a communication perspective. I think that the brand needed that, that richness, that legacy, that uh, human dimension to it. And I think that that's, that's something that we, we really wanted to do, not necessarily uh, recapture, but reignite. And Jackie, there he is, and up. And that is this week's program. Next week, join us as we visit the annual Rage Gaming Expo. And we also go in depth on some of the big winners at this year's Luries. Goodbye, and thank you for watching. ENCA.com